Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Thrive, a podcast that is helping you live a holistic Christian life. And today we are going to be looking at one of the topics that are close to my heart. Um, that is the issue of genetics, uh, particularly focusing on sickle cell anemia. And we're going to be exploring uh, how this genetic predisposition meet with faith because of course i believe that jesus should be in the equation irregardless of the topic of discussion and so to help us navigate um the topic today we have a highly esteemed dr pride kundomba uh, medical health practitioner and dr pride welcome thank you so much for honoring our invitation we are so glad to have you here Maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Dr. Pride Gundomba? Thank you for having me today. Well, if I am to say anything about myself, I would rather say I am a child of God who happens to be a medical doctor. Let me stress this and say, for everything that people may know me for, I would want you to know me as a child of God. I may do anything else that fascinates you, that brings positive change in the community. But all that is tied to me being a child of God and is an expression of the gifts that God has deposited in me. I would believe that this sums up who I am. I'm glad Tekla that we're here today. We are discussing science in the context of the Christian faith. I really love the, the link between science and Christianity, and then hoping that you will also continue with your good work where you share and inspire generations. I love that the definition of us being the child of God is the blueprint, everything else stems from that, and which makes the topic even more interesting because. I think the viewers can already see that we're dealing with someone who has strong Christian values, which is the whole purpose of Thrive. We were trying to look at issues pertaining to the body, the spirit and soul from a Christian perspective. And I uh, believe the Lord is going to help you to help us to um, dissect um, the topic of discussion today. So maybe to start with, um, what exactly is a genotype? And why is it important for individuals, um, the young adults, even couples, to know about their genotype? Can I give this background so that our listeners may understand? In science, we have what we call genotype, and we have what we call phenotype. It is easier to explain phenotype because phenotype is what we then see. But the real reason behind what we see is what we then say, the genotype. So whatever we see, every feature we see on a human being is the phenotype. But for us to have that feature, it was because of the genotype. But in summary, let me say, the genotype is your genetic makeup. I believe that this is a basic definition that makes it clear for our audience and that may bring them to the same level as us when we are discussing. I am sure that there are other deeper definitions that may suit a context where we are talking about science. In this case, as well, they will deeply realize that you invited me for a talk on sickle cell, right? So when we then talk of genetic makeup with specific context to this subject, we are talking about what kind of hemoglobin you inherited from your parents. So the genetics is what you inherit from your parents and it then determines who you are as a human being. So in the case of sickle cell, we generally have what we call AA. AA is the normal. Then we have what we call AS. AS is the carrier. And SS is well, the one who then has the condition which we call sickle cell disease. Now remember when we were starting this discussion, I was speaking about what we call phenotype. If your genetic makeup is AA, it means you have received DNA from one parent 
and another A from another parent. And what we then got was an AA in the genotype. And the phenotype, which is the expression, will be AA, which is also considered normal. Now, the other one, we get an A from one parent and an S from another parent. So that means that they become a carrier. So genetically, at genetic level, they are AS. It means they carry a trait of this disease. Wow, I love the way that you have simplified it so that uh, you can be able to understand even those that do not come from a science background. Why is it sickle cell anemia is more prominent in um, Nigeria than Zimbabwe? Well, I will try to bring our minds to some of the basic things that we learned in science, probably form one or two, where we were talking about uh, natural selection. So in natural selection, that's the same subject where we're talking about survival of the fittest. That's one of the subjects that we discussed when we were starting out as scientists probably we then in high school. So in Nigeria, we have a high rate of careers. And one of the explanations that is that can be offered to try and explain that phenomenon is comes from the understanding that the sickle cell gene offers protection against malaria. And malaria is endemic in Nigeria. When we say endemic, maybe let me say malaria is common. You know, this is not a strictly medical definition of the word endemic, but I want us to be on the same page with our audience. So we're saying we have a place where there is a high rate of malaria. So at the end of the day, because of that concept of natural selection and survival of the fittest, you find that those who have a, a gene that offers them protection from malaria, they have a higher chance of living than those who do not have. Because remember that back then we didn't have treatment for malaria. And if malaria is not treated, it is fatal. Even nowadays, if we don't detect malaria early and treat it early, it can turn out to be a fatal, fatal event. So now in the concept where I speak about natural selection, it is common that in this environment, those who have a gene that can protect them against malaria, we have a greater number of them surviving. Now with a greater number of those people surviving, it means when they then meet and start to make families, we now have a higher chance where we have people with sickle cell disease. Probably just to draw this one for us as we, as we move on. If we have two partners who are carriers of the sickle cell gene, it essentially means that there's a 25% chance that one of the children might have the condition sickle cell disease. I would say in summary that would explain why Nigeria has such statistics. Hmm. Hmm. I'm glad now I have the actual reason. Now. There's also a particular issue because now we're talking of um, from a Christian perspective, there are people who may be like, I am a Christian and um, I don't need to be concerned with these things um, because I believe in perfect health. By his wounds, we are healed, etc., etc. But how does understanding one's genotype align with, with Christian values? Well, thank you so much. I'm glad that we are moving into that segment that speaks of who I am and the gifts that God has given me. So you're saying somebody saying I'm a believer. I don't need to worry, you know, I live in perfect health. They are having declarations, you know, I have nothing against declarations. And the question is, does such a mindset align with faith-based values? Well, in that case, I want to bring us to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. It says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed to us belong to us and to our children forever that we may follow all the ways of this law. 
So you know, this is the Bible that we read every day, the Bible that is the gold standard for what we believe. God is essentially saying, or the word of God is essentially saying, what we know is for us to use and to apply. So the knowledge that the Lord has given us, let's apply it in our daily lives. And applying it is what we call wisdom. What we do not know yet, probably let's leave it to the Lord by the message of the Lord. I'm sure we will still be able to make it. In summary, that's what I would say. There's nothing wrong with knowing. Rather knowing and ignoring it in the name of faith may turn out rather just to be foolishness. Because I believe that the knowledge that we have is a result of what the Lord has revealed unto men. Yeah, so we don't have to be ignorant. I, I love that. So what role does the church play in all this? Um, be it even promoting genotype testing? You know, churches, they really play, play a big role. They play a big role, especially when it comes to any issue in the community. I want you to realize how people view churches. Churches are viewed as an authority in one way or the other. So it means that if of the other. So it means that if churches come in and they begin to promote genotype testing, it means it also becomes another avenue to disseminate the information. And generally those who are firm believers in Christian Christianity, once the church comes on board, I'm sure they won't have problems taking up the subject and acting on it. That's true, that's true. So besides sickle cell anemia, are there other um, genetic, oh, actually, are there other genetic disorders that people should know about? Yes, yes, I do agree that definitely there are other blood conditions besides the sickle cell that involve the blood and that are also genetic. So I'll give an example of thalassemia, hemophilia, I may not go into the details today, because probably that's not the, the, the subject at hand. But definitely they are there. Right, right. We'll definitely have you on another episode to go deeper into all those other um, genetic disorders. So what practical steps should individuals take to have um, genotype testing and uh, where should they go? In respect, it will respect to Zimbabwe. So, if somebody wants to to get genotype testing in Zimbabwe, the best way is to talk to your doctor. The doctor will then link you up to the service providers. You know, because at times you can't just show up at a laboratory and. The scientists may not be in a position to explain the results to you. That's why you see that generally when people get tests, from wherever they get tests, the scientists, even if they know what the tests mean, they would rather refer you to a doctor. That is the proper and ethical thing to do. So what I would say is, what's practical is get to see to your, your doctor, sit down with your doctor, talk, and the doctor will link you up to the proper service provider be it government institutions or in private practice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for couples when they discover that they are both AS? Well, for, for, for young couples, I would say wisdom is situational because here we are discussing a, a condition that can be passed on to offspring. So we are discussing probably the case that would be of interest is when two young men, a young man and a young lady meet, you know, they are both carriers, they want to get married. The very first thing that we have to empower them is with is information. They should know, they deserve to know. And when they know, it empowers them to make decisions. Remember, there is always a chance that they may have another child 
who does not have the condition. But you know, it's important for them to know that that is totally dependent on factors that they cannot control. It's more or less like gambling. You know that there's a chance that we may have a child with sickle cell condition. There is a chance that the child may not have it. So the most important thing is for them to know. Number two, it is important for people to understand when they are now getting married that at times when you then get tested, go through premarital counseling, you know, get tested even, you know, medically, genetically, and you will see something that can be a potential hindrance to a marriage. You know, when you feel that you may not be in a position to handle it later on in marriage, it is not a sin to say, my friend, maybe let's part ways. You know, but I would always say wisdom is situational. If the two people are willing to continue, it means we have to support them with the necessary resources and they have to know what is there for them in store. I believe that some may just choose to say, no, let's continue, we will not have children. You know, it's, it's another option. Some will say, no, let's continue, we will adopt children. All those are options that are available. But the very most important thing for them is empower them with information. So what final message would you have for our viewers? My final message will be science and faith across parties, if I may say so, you know, in, in street lingo. They work together. Nothing can move on its own. I, I, that's my strong conviction. What we just have to avoid is to probably spread falsehoods under the guise of, you know, probably faith, or also to spread falsehoods under the guise of science. You know, the very fact that we are children of God, we are scientists, it places a responsibility on us to make sure that we save the people of God in the best way possible, in all honest and in good faith. And with this I would say thank you. Probably maybe till we meet next time, if there's going to be a next time. Take care. Thank you for having me on this podcast. Wow, thank you so much for the time you have invested in uh, educating us on this topic from a medical and faith perspective. And I hope our viewers as well have learned something. All right, everyone, that's it for today's episode on Thrive. Remember your journey to a holistic life, body, spirit, and soul. It's a continuous journey and you are not alone. We are in this together. Please subscribe, like, and share.